Hi everyone, let's go over my medium time frame and low time frame bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the medium time frame bearish scenario where we are still looking for a move towards the downside in a WXY correction inside wave 2 or B before then continuation to the upside in a wave 3 or a wave C. In this scenario, wave W was a zigzag structure in an ABC where the 0.618 is an important target for wave C, also a rare target taken from the high to the low of wave A to the high of wave B. Inside wave X we are looking for an expanding flat where the 3A2 is a minimum target for a wave X. The 0.5 is in confluence with the triple top at 30.4k and the 0.786 is also in confluence with the resistance area that I have which is between 31.1k and 31.3k. Now for a wave C however in an ABC the 7.86 is a very far-fetched target but nonetheless it is one that we have to keep in mind. In this scenario, inside wave 1 or A, we are then looking for this five wave structure to the upside and the main reason I choose this pivot over here for the high is because of the length in time of this corrective structure but it has to be said that this wave 4 over here is extremely long compared to this very short wave 2. This wave 4 is 11 times longer in time compared to this very small wave 2 and therefore it is not really preferred. If we look at the medium time frame more bullish scenario we are looking for continuation to the upside. In this scenario, wave 1 or A is finished over here on the left pivot for then a 3-wave corrective structure and then looking for wave C or wave 3 to the upside. The 3A2 provided support over here for then the end of wave 2 or B and it has to be known that the 3A2 is a common target for a wave B retracement but a rare target for a wave 2. So bouncing over here on the 3A2 and looking for upside gives a little bit more probabilities to this potentially being a wave C to the upside side instead of a wave 3 up to the upside however nonetheless the 3a2 is also a rare target for a wave 2 so it all depends on how price then moves towards the upside in either a wave 3 or a wave c now a wave 3 is usually very parabolic and has a high amount of volume much higher than we got over here in this wave 1 while for a wave C you expect a more lazy sideways structure usually longer than the one to one that you see over here which is a fib time taken from the low to the high of A to the low over here that we made last night or yesterday from a central east European time zone and you also expect the volume to be quite similar to wave A in a wave C so wave C ending usually behind or after the one to one fib time which is the reason that my wave C target box over here is behind this one one to one with the one to one sitting on Wednesday the 9th of August and the minimum target for wave C sitting between 35k and 36.7k most common target area for wave C as well pulled from the low to the high of A to the low of wave B and for a wave 3 you like to see a more impulsive structure more volume more impulsivity where the minimum target usually for a wave 3 is the 1.618 which is at 39.3k and if you have seen my macro and high time frame video of last Sunday you know that the 30k area is a very important resistance area. If we then look at this volume profile then if we go to the daily you will see that price bounced perfectly on the value area high as it stands. So this value uh, area over here taken from this range and the value area high has been tested price moving out back testing the value area high over here for then potentially continuation which would be very nice in the bullish scenario in the bearish scenario in case price would move to the downside we then have the point of control as support and we have the support areas over here around 26 and 27k if we zoom in a little bit more locally then you can see we are currently inside the resistance area that we have tested twice very simple support resistance flip area was support for a long time turned into resistance twice now testing it for the third time and maybe three times is the charm or something the quote goes <laughs> so maybe we're going to push through in this occasion and reach the triple top also if we extend this value area low of the volume profile of this range over here then you can see we now tested the value area low and of course for more upside you want to see this broken you want to see price enter maybe a bit of a back test and then eventually continuation where then the probabilities are high to go to the point of control and the value area high of the range as well. 
if you go to the lower time frame scenarios this is the bearish one so this one leads to more downside so this is the wave x scenario basically on the medium time frame where we are looking for that expanding flat in this scenario we are then looking for a wave a three wave b and an impulsive c towards the upside where the most common target area for wave c is between the two 1.618 which is between 29.1k and 30.4k where we also have that triple top just above which is very interesting indeed for maybe a liquidity grab and then a move to the downside and also above the triple top you can see this blue target area between 30.4k and 30.6k and then over here the 31k resistance area which also is important resistance and sorry this of course is resistance and not support so in this scenario we now hit the most common target area of wave c so then the question is would this already be the high of wave c and can we expect a move towards the downside well i like to talk about that in the bullish scenario where we are looking for an impulse to the upside because if we are looking for an impulsive structure to the upside and we open the volume as i wrote over here then what you want to see in an impulsive structure is the highest volume in a wave three to the upside so likely this is still part of a wave three then a sideways four before then a five towards the upside on lower volume now because we didn't have a new local high during this move to the upside on uh, lower volume one can still expect this impulsive structure to not be finished meaning in the bearish scenario we still expect another move to the upside to at least create a new high on lower volume as a wave 5 usually does but in the bullish scenario we also expect more upside still so in both of these scenarios we are then still expecting continuation to the upside for at least this high to be broken now in this bullish scenario we then have a one two and then eventually s3 is then not yet finished as we are still looking for another high on lower volume we can still expect wave three to be in then a wave four and then eventually a wave five by far the most common impulsive structure is an impulse or the, a big extension in a wave three it's usually Usually the biggest the strongest the longest impulsive wave out of wave one wave three and wave five so that is why the probabilities are highest than this uh, that this is still a wave three and not for example ex uh, extended wave five in a one two three four five it's just a probabilities thing so this is something i'm looking at at the moment we also know the resistance areas locally uh, as mentioned we had a resistance area between 30k and 30.1k so that is now being tested over here as you can see potentially a uh, move to the downside where we can find support in the uh, resistance area that was broken very easily over here between 29.3k and 29.4k i always like to keep my target areas on the chart in case they get broken this impulsively because they can now act as support for continuation towards the upside if we then look at the cvd divergences we had some bullish cvd divergences over here but as it stands now over here it's very much neutral if i go to the cvd chart then you can see over here on the 50 minute higher low on price but you can see the yellow line moving towards the downside as well as the blue line there moving towards the downside that is bullish cvd divergences and more locally not too much over here going on we have to wait and see what happens and if we see some more divergences coming in as well it would of course be brilliant to eventually maybe after the taking the triple top who knows to have some bullish divergences with the low but hey we don't know what we're gonna get right if we look at the news because we do have news then today is apparently the litecoin halving so it is over here marked as important news high impact expected so make sure you trade safe regarding volatility today on thursday which is tomorrow 4 p.m we also have high volatility news as well as on friday so expect a volatile ending of this week which is something we like to see if we then finally talk about the probabilities of the different scenarios now, first of all, on the medium time frame, I'm very neutral between bullish and bearish. I would actually argue a little bit more towards the bearish uh, or the bullish, sorry, the bullish scenario. Main reason being time. So in this scenario, this way four has to be valid uh, which is a very long way for as uh, explained and then you have a wxy that is fine in this scenario the wxy is fine uh, but this way four is the problem as it is so incredibly long while in this scenario this is a corrective structure which fits a little bit better and then a three-wave structure so therefore like from a pure elliott wave perspective 
It is very close to neutral, but if you then look at time, which is also part of Elliott Waves, because it's not just price relationships, it's also time relationships, the bullish scenario has a little bit more uh, preference, uh, like higher probability compared to the more bearish scenario. And the same is then uh, also happening on the lower time frames. I mean, the lower time frames are actually very neutral because we are still in both scenarios looking for a move towards the upside which is what I wrote over here as well. Both looking for more upside, it uh, then depends on the impulse we get and the reactions at resistance where we have that triple top coming in as well, which can be a very interesting target. But as explained, it would be nice to see at least another move to the upside on at least lower volume to think about either a wave C or the ending of maybe a wave one, two and continuation to the upside. So that being said, I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing. And I'd like to See you at the next one. Bye-bye.